Hello, welcome to the third masterclass in which I'll be talking about actually the URA master plan when we talk about our plus system. So the U stands for URA master plan. So URA master plan, I feel is something that is actually very important. A lot of agents are actually talking about it, but it was not actually going into depth. So let me share with you a little bit of what I mean by looking at the URA master plan. So when we look at Singapore at that time, uh, I always look for investors, right, for the URA master plan where I look for two things. Number one is actually a transformation and number two, I look at rejuvenation of that area. So best is that if you have these two, you know, it will be very profitable for you. So let's look at one example, a few examples, okay? So we look at the 203 master plan and the 2019 master plan. So because these are what is available for us, okay? Uh, every five years, there's going to be master plan up and coming. So you should always be looking for the changes, okay? For me, uh, normally when, when the master plan changed at time, normally I will spend a couple of, of minutes, right? Uh, doing a new video that talks about the changes of the new master plan, okay? Where are the areas that has been affected? So come, let's look at some of the examples, okay? You can see like the Mayfair. The Mayfair is actually located upper Bukit Timah, near King Albert Park, that area. So the Mayfair actually like in 203, the PSF was actually 450. And then, you know, when in 20 years down the road, right? It actually doubled in value in 2,100 per square foot. Okay, uh, Park Oasis is also an old condominium that is like in 203, it's like 370 PSF. While, you know, not right now, Park Oasis is like 1,100 where it is three times, you know, the increase of prices. Okay, so we do have multiple examples. Now, example I do is I Ivory Heights. Ivory Heights is like 250 and then it increased four times over the last, uh, in, in 20 years times, you know. And for J Gateway, you know, it increases actually from uh, uh, close to 150 to uh, 190. Okay, so of course, if you see that we have different examples, uh, this as this four example I'm just showing you is that there is potential growth, definitely 100%. If you enter into an area that has uh, a, a growth location, all right. So you may be asking me, hey, why is there such a big difference? You know, why J Gateway? You know, the the price increase is not as much. It's not like four times increase. Now it's actually a very simple reason. Is because right, if you look at my plus system, you know, you are only looking at one category. So you have to look at other categories. Okay, and J Gateway does not follow my plus system in the number one that is in terms of pricing. Okay, so of course price pricing, as I said, is the most important factor. If you can un go into it cheap, it will give you very good beneficial results. But then again, because although J Gateway, you are the person entering into it in 2013, is actually on the market high yet. You know, when people enter into the market high their time yet, right after 10 years down the road, they still make very very good profit. It's actually something very remarkable. Okay, so I have always been talking about this, you know, when I meet clients at the time, I always been sharing this one. So this chart is actually the overall draft master plan in 2019. So you, you can see that the blue color regions, or the light blue color regions are those that are actually undergoing transformation. And I will always tell my clients that, hey, buy into this type area, you will not go wrong, 100% guaranteed, you know, wherever you go. So of course, the yellow color you will see is actually more industrial estate, while the dark blue color, the circles, are actually the commercial no okay so the nearer you are for commercial notes the, the, the better it is the more that I actually recommend to you but does it means that you can buy into all this region no okay don't use this like the Bible it doesn't tell the full story so for example okay let's look at the Jurong Lake district Jurong Lake district has been happening since 2013 you know for the last 20 years already the government has been talking about it already so if you enter into a Jurong Lake district right now okay you may fall behind so it is actually not the right area to look for okay other areas is like uh, maybe like your Changi Bismarck or or maybe your Serangoon area. Yeah, Serangoon area is also a very good uh, uh, story that I can actually share is that um, it has actually grown already. So if it has grown already, there's not many rooms to grow. So in my last slide later, just stick with me, you know, my last slide. More important is that you need to see what is happening in the next 10 years or the next 20 years. So we... So my last one for my S is actually your selling strategy or your exit strategy. So you need to know is that when you sell that time, what is going to happen to that location? So you need to plan um, when you are going to sell. Like let's say you decide to sell 10 years, 20 years, and when you want to sell that time, what is going to happen at that time, at that point of time, what transformation is going to happen at that point of time that will cause your property price to spike up. 
Okay, so this is something actually very important. So uh, some people have been asking me, hey, can I buy Woodlands area or not? So my answer to them is actually very simple. Okay, when are you intending to sell? So for example, let's say you just intend to hold a property for three years and you want to sell for the for, for Woodlands for uh, hold the property, buy a property in Woodlands, hold for three years and sell it after that. No, I don't see the growth to be there because Woodlands seems to be more of a longer term project, you know, 20, 30 years project later. So let's say I have an investor. I'll buy, ask them to go for, okay, uh, near the, the Bona Vista area. One North area is actually a very good area, uh, location in, in 20. 2024 during this period okay you can actually look at uh, Bishan uh, possible Topayo possible uh, Padaiba has actually been 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 grown already in uh, 20, 2019 period so it's also over um, let me see Changi Business Park is one area that is also very good or the Changi Air Hub okay location is very good that actually you can enter right now okay uh, that I'll rather recommend this style of location rather than the Woodlands Regional Center all right because of the growth period so let's look at different category um, the first one I'll talk about is actually the west side so west side what do we have you know we we, we do have the uh, Tuas area uh, we, sorry this is the north side first so the north side we do have uh, what what do we have here we have this uh, the the wood Woodlands Regional Center, but again, I was sharing just now that the Woodlands Regional Center maybe will be the next 20, 30 years growth. So if you intend to buy a property and you intend to hold for long term, you know, 20 years down the road, I feel that Woodlands Regional Center is actually something very good. You know, Sinoco Food, food Center, a lot of uh, food uh, factories will be built over at that area. Okay, you can look at the Salita, Salita Air Base itself. Okay, there's also another growth area itself, and actually your Pongo Digital District has been very good. Uh, has not been built yet. The university is not there yet. Uh, many people is will be going there to work. So you know, if you are looking into buying uh, Pongo, I still believe Pongo is a very good area that you can look for for the next ten years. You can actually enter into it. So there will never be a wrong time to buy into Pongo if you intend to hold at least for ten years. So let's look towards the west area. So the west area, we do have the Tuas area, we have the Jurong Island, we have the uh, Jurong, uh, Jurong uh, International District, okay? And you know, the Jurong, Jurong growth area is actually very good and right now it is still growing, okay? Uh, there's a lot of SM, uh, S, S, uh, small business enterprises, okay? SMEs are enter entering the Jurong area. So I still see Jurong entering. Now the only problem with Jurong is that uh, if you look at the recent transaction of JQ, you know, prices have actually reached 2,700 per square foot. So a lot of people are actually very bullish into Jurong area. But the problem with that is that if you are too bullish at time, people will not be able to afford if the price is too high. So instead of looking at Jurong, my recommendation right now is actually look into the outskirts of Jurong area, uh, like all the way to Jurong, for example, Jurong West, Lakeside, uh, all the way to Boon Lay area. I feel that these are actually very, very, very good location that you can actually enter into, okay? And especially the one-off area. So one-off area, just to share a little bit more, is that it's really going to be very good because if I look into the district area or the address area, it's Itself, okay there's many many commercial areas that are like science park you know are uh, high people with high income yet there's very few residential areas or resident developments in that project in that district so therefore therefore I feel that not only is one north going to be very good you know if you feel that one north is too expensive you can look at outskirts around it uh, it's along the the yellow line the circle line so it will not go wrong also so I look at one north as a very a big project uh, you know that you can actually invest into for the next five to ten years now looking into the west itself you know just now i was actually talking about pongo itself pongo again i feel it's very very good area um there is also the uh, what, what do you have it over here so we have the tampanis area we do have uh what we call that the changi air aviation hub okay all the way to changi area and now the changi let me talk a little bit about the changi aviation hub okay so although you see that it is, seems to be very far to the east all right and there's nothing linking into it but then again don't forget if you look into the transport master plan okay so under L URA, uh under the the 
Ministry of Transport, right, you can also find, or LTA, you can also find master plan for transport. So that's where they are going to build your M MRT lines. So it's very important to trace into the, the MRT lines, the future MRT lines, especially across island MRT lines, and it will actually start all the way from Changi area, okay? So therefore, all these will be linked up. So I look at Changi area, Tampanese area, you know, Pasir area. These are also very strong growth location that the price is still very relatively cheap that you can actually enter into it, okay? And you know, when you enter into prices that's very cheap at the time, there's more room to grow. So definitely all these type of location, you can buy cheap, you know, you will be able to catch up with the prices. Okay. Uh, yep. You can also look at uh, Changi Business Park also. Changi Business Park, there's still multiple lands available for uh, commercial units to be built in that area. So I can do. I, I do look into it also. Okay. Of course, we do have your uh, your Palima Air Base. Now, there's this thing called decentralization of the air base of of the Singapore Transport Hub, where the Greater South Waterfront, you know, the the Tanjong Pagar area. The shipping area will all be shifted into Tuas area. And if you look into the air base area, will all be shifted into the Paleba area. Now, so which means that the air base will be able to build multiple big plots of land, right? For people to, uh, you know, for HDB to enter into it. So basically, it's a whole new big district area, you know. And of course, the problem is that, oh, does it mean that I can buy into it near there? You know, like for example, can I buy into Ubi, that area? Now, the problem is that this will still take... You know, like 2030 for it to develop, to, to clear the land. And from 2030 onwards, you know, it can take 20, 30 years, 40 years, you know, for HDB to enter into it, for condominiums to enter into it, infrastructure to enter into it. So it still may be a bit too early to, into entering to like Aukang area, um, Ubi area. So, you know, if you hear outside from agents saying that, oh, uh, talk about Palapa Air Base. I still feel that it is too early. But then again, if we look at 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, potentially I will recommend you to enter into that area instead. Okay? So, Paleva Air Base is a little bit uh, too early. However, if you look at some areas, like how, example, Tampanese North Area. Okay? So, Tampanese North Area, you know, is upcoming train station. They are going to build a mall there. They are going to build a mixed development there. HDBs, BTOs are coming up that area. So, in fact, Comparing, if you are looking at the shorter time frame, like maybe around now 2024 to 2025, yes, I feel that Tampanese North Area, in fact, is a way to go rather than uh, than uh, the the Paleba Air Base area. So let's look at the West Area. Uh, sorry, the South Area. So the South Area basically is that uh, in 2019, you know, our Prime Minister has already says that they are going to clear all the land into built into the Greater Southern Waterfront. So then we already know that this area will be very very prime location. Okay, these are up and coming location. So and also you look at the Marina South Area. There's also multiple empty plots of land available to build more developments. The question is, when will this be built? So, the, right now, they are clearing the land out, okay? So, by then, they are clear is like 2030. So, I expect that maybe 20, uh, 2035, 2040, you know, like 15 years down the road, then they may start to build uh, more developments. So, that's where I see that this style area will be growing. So, of course, if you say that you want to enter into it uh, for, for the Greater Southern Waterfront, yes, by all means, it is not wrong at all, okay? Marina South is not wrong at all. But again, if you are, your exit strategy is you are looking for like a five years period. So I feel that this will not be so good area already because by five years, you won't be seeing much transformation. The transformation again is of a much longer picture. So then again, you know, uh, going near Greater Southern Waterfront is never wrong also because of the, of the circle line, okay? Uh, and the circle line, if you look at the transport master plan, will also be joining up so again uh, this is uh, this is actually a very important slide that actually I like to share okay I always use this slide when I'm talking to my investors okay so you need to know about your exit strategy when you want to sell so for example let's say you are buying you, you may say that oh I'm buying something for own stay okay you are buying something for own stay you are going to buy a 99 leasehold property and then uh, you are going to buy something that is um, let's say, uh, 99 leasehold property. So you roughly are going to stay, your holding period maybe it is 8 to 12 years. So let's say we are talking about 2024 right now, you add another 12 years period, it's like 2036, okay? So now what I did over here is I list out what is going to happen in that particular year that is going to undergo transformation. So for example, can you buy 
uh, the south or not. Where would I recommend you buy the south area? So of course, like if you look at the south area, come let's look at this one. Okay, uh, the Kappa Pay golf course expired in 2021. Definitely the government is going to undergo transformation there. So let's say you're buying somewhere near the greater southern waterfront. So you have multiple exits, you know. For example, you can exit in 2025 where the circle line kind of full picture. You can exit, you know, when the three ports relocated at time in 2027. 2030 is your, your west coast extension line, completion of your west coast extension line, and you know your greater southern waterfront will actually complete in 2040. So this is what I mean by the milestone. You have to hit the milestone, therefore, and that is where the property price will start to spike up. So this is what I feel that it is actually very important for you. Don't take you know the, the just now the picture as, as a Bible. In fact, this is actually more important. You need to know your exit strategy. When you intend to sell, and therefore, from there, we can, we can have a discussion of what development for you to choose. So that is actually more important, okay? So that's it I have for you where I actually do a very quick uh, explanation that, uh, on how to use master plan to look at what you should be buying. Again, I talk about two things, transformation and rejuvenation. These two are very, very important. You should be always looking for it. I will always recommend clients to go for developments that are undergoing these two major factors okay and of course after i will look into it that time i also will be asking my my clients my my investors you know specifically what is your selling strategy what is your exit plan and from understanding your exit plan then i can recommend a suitable project that it will suit your exit plan for them and then we can actually uh, move forward to choose the right property for them, okay? So definitely, you know, there isn't a one-size-fit-all project. I hope by now you can understand that, you know, if you ask me, James, give me a development that will give me the highest possible profit. You know, it is too generic. I'm not able to answer you. But however, if I can understand you better, understand your needs, understand when you intend to sell, understand what you intend to do with this property, okay, then I can give you a better explanation of which location is actually better. Okay, so that's it I have for you. Uh, if you like this video, feel free, please do give us a thumbs up and a like button, okay? Uh, we do have multi multiple subscribers and I do notice you are actually pretty quiet in the chat. Please feel free to chat, to type anything in the comment section. I will definitely get back to you. If you are feel free, if you want to contact me, if you want to know more about this, yep, please feel free to, to, to message me or WhatsApp me in my handphone number be below okay so that's it i have for you thank you so long and i'll see you in the next video bye